Welcome to vehicle training for Halo 3. We're here to share some of the tactics and strategies used by Halo 3's elite players. The purpose of these videos is to help you perfect your skills and provide you with the strength that you'll need to succeed in the Halo 3 Championship coming up in March. This video focuses on the Covenant vehicles you'll find in ranked Halo 3 matches. While these vehicles lack the transport capabilities of their human counterparts, their sheer firepower and maneuverability makes up for their inability to make a getaway with the flag. Let's examine the Ghost first. This is an agile and quick ground vehicle with good front armor, a pair of plasma cannons, and a boost that can maintain 60 miles an hour indefinitely. The controls of the Ghost operate just like infantry controls, so the left thumbstick operates your position while the right thumbstick controls your aim and turning. As a result, the Ghost is very easy to jump in and use. It's just like being a faster, better armed, better armored infantry person. The Ghost's ability to boost allows it to burst forward, getting in or out of battle more quickly, and adding more than enough speed to splatter fully shielded opponents. This, combined with your own rechargeable shields, makes it easy for you to escape a hairy situation and return moments later at full shields. Skill pilots can even use the boost to avoid tipping or rolling the ghost over when going over rough terrain or negotiating nearby blasts. However, note that your ability to turn is greatly reduced while you're boosting, and your weapons are disabled as well. You can also gain a slight speed advantage when cornering sharply by boosting while you turn. This doesn't actually speed up the turn, but neither does it slow you down like boosting normally does when turning. The advantage here is that you can save fractions of a second as soon as you let off the right thumbstick because your boost is already engaged and kicks in immediately. Note that if you apply the air brake while already boosting at full speed, you don't slow down much, but the nose of your ghost will lift up. This allows you to clear rough terrain or reach some difficult to reach spots. The ghost's twin plasma cannons work much the same as dual wielded plasma rifles. The projectiles are slow, so you need to lead an opponent and shoot where they're going, not where they currently are. Like all plasma weapons, these cannons are particularly good at draining shields, but don't fare as well against armor. Luckily, they have a rapid rate of fire and never overheat, so feel free to keep the trigger pulled down. Also, longtime Halo players should note that the fuel tank on the left side of the Ghost is no longer a vulnerable spot like it was in Halo 2. Next, let's look at the Banshee. The Banshee is an aerial fighter with a great loadout of weapons, excellent maneuverability, and a fast boost speed over 60 miles an hour. This makes the Banshee great for anti-infantry hit-and-run tactics, and it's also great for dogfighting. Like infantry, the right thumbstick controls your turning and aiming. The left thumbstick, however, controls your forward speed while pressing up or down, from zero to roughly 40 miles an hour. Pressing left or right affects your yaw movement, which is quite slow. When your speed is low, the Banshee will drop altitude, However, full speed won't cause your altitude to climb very much. The Banshee's need for forward motion, combined with its slow yaw movement, means that sideways motion is normally only good for small adjustments. Keep in mind that Halo 3's Banshee cannot fly straight down, so you'll need to approach foes from no more than 45 degrees above them. The Banshee can also perform a sideways roll or backwards flip by pressing those respective directions on the left thumbstick and the air brake at the same time. A last-minute sideways roll is a great way to avoid incoming missiles, while a boost is a great way to shake off a good lock-on. The rapid-firing main guns on the Banshee operate much the same as the cannons on the Ghost. The secondary fuel rod cannon on the Banshee will often kill infantry in a single explosive blast. However, keep in mind that the fuel rod has some bullet drop, and it travels slowly enough that opponents can dodge if they see it coming. With practice, some players are adept at running over infantry with the Banshee. It is a substantial risk, however, because foes can dodge out of the way and carjack you if they see you coming. Often, it's best simply to use the fuel rod cannon instead. Finally, keep in mind that if you're in dire straits, you can simply jump out of the Banshee. As long as you land on the map, you will take no falling damage. Thanks again for taking part in vehicle training. To learn more about vehicle training, the Halo 3 Championship, or to register for the plane wind sweepstakes associated with this basic combat training. Click on any vehicle training banners you see on Xbox Live, or log on at xbox.com slash US Army. The Halo 3 Championship is sponsored by the US Army. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. 
To learn more, visit GoArmy.com.